This conference will now be recorded. Welcome folks. This is session number 39 in the NSA Professional Services series of webinars. My name is Brian Weaver. I'm the VP of Sales and your host for today's session. With me today is James Curtis. He's president and CEO of Web Presented. And our session today is on using artificial intelligence to power CRM. A little background on James. He's the founder and CEO of Web Presented. Uh, he brings more than eight years of executive experience with leading uh, software vendors. Previously, James was a senior software architect at Infor, so he's got experience with the ERP solution that we all use, uh, and a management consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers in the UK. Uh, he's a leader in product strategy and enterprise architecture, uh, combining high-level engineering skills and creativity. Uh, James has uh, implemented a uh, hundreds of CRM solutions for wholesale distributors across the US, Canada, and in Europe. And he's a regular speaker at industry events. Uh, he will be attending TUG this year, as will NSA. And anybody that's on the call today that is attending TUG that would like to have a deeper dive uh, with this particular solution, I would invite you to please message myself or James. And with that, James, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Thanks for the introduction and welcome everybody uh, to today's webinar. Um, as Brian mentioned, my name is James Gerdes. Uh, I'll be guiding you through around about a 40 minute uh, demo today. And uh, I'll let you know that we will have time for questions at the end of my demonstration. So if you have questions that arise while I'm going through the demonstration, please feel free to enter them into the chat window of the webinar and Brian will read them out at the end and I'll be sure to answer them um, and make sure we cover everyone's questions at the end. So let's get started then. Um, what am I going to cover today? Well, really I'm going to cover two uh, key areas of artificial intelligence. Uh, Web presented, for those of you who don't know us, we've been around for around about 15 years. Uh, we uh, are the number one CRM platform for in four distributors. Um, we don't solely sell to Infor customers. Uh, we sold to all distributors across multiple ERP platforms. Um, but as Brian mentioned, uh, me personally, I used to work for Infor. One of our other founders also used to work for Infor. Uh, we know the Infor platform inside and out. Uh, we know the technology, we know the uh, distribution industry, and we've got an astonishingly high success rate of successfully adopted CRM implementation. We've got over 300 Infor customers uh, running on web presented CRM. That makes us the number one CRM platform for info distributors um, in the world. Whether that, that includes um, customers running on Infor's own CRM um, and other obviously large well-known CRMs as well. The focus of today's webinar is artificial intelligence or AI, uh, as I'll call it from here on in. And uh, it's an area that has absolutely exploded in the last few years. And at Web Presented, we are making a very, very strong push to incorporate AI into the CRM process wherever we possibly can. We've invested very heavily in our data science team. Uh, we have a collaboration with a, uh, an organization here. Uh, we're headquartered in Ohio. We've got a collaboration with, a, with a, a, lot, a number of large Fortune 500 companies um, to leverage uh, AI technologies, uh, an organization called the Columbus Collaborative, um, and we're reaping the benefits of that partnership by integrating artificial intelligence and machine learning into the web presented CRM platform. My goal today is to show you how AI is currently used within our web presented CRM platform, but also to give you a preview of some of the current development that we've got in in place and to give you a look at what um, at what CRM might look like uh, in the foreseeable future in, in a year or so um, when we launch our new platform called WPCRM Playmaker, which is going to be a, a complete game changer for uh, distributors and their sales organizations. A uh, quick word about uh, Web Presented. We've actually been around since 2003. Our product, uh, Web Presented CRM, has been around for uh, around the roughly 10, 10 to 12 years. Uh, we are based here in Ohio. We've got over 20,000 um, users running the platform as part of their um, critical operations on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, we're very, we were, for the last three years, we've been nominated 
uh, actually awarded um, a spot on the prestigious Inc. 5000 uh, fastest growing uh, privately held companies in the USA. Um, our customers are drawn from all across uh, the US, Canada, and Europe, um, including some very large marquee customers that you're probably familiar with, um, especially from the info space and um, on the global uh, distribution side as well. Our platform, uh, the AI uh, is, is built on top of a, a CRM platform, uh, which is uh, known and, and renowned to be easy to use. It operates in both a browser and in a mobile format. Um, and of course, it's uh, scalable, not only to meet the immediate needs of you're just sort of dipping your toes in, in the water of CRM, but also to be an extremely robust, scalable platform, um, enterprise grade CRM platform um, that's connected to multiple other systems, including your Infor ELP platform um, that will be with you and grow with you as you um, digitally transform your sales organizations. Uh, a quick note on WPCRM, we are built on three foundational principles. Uh, number one, providing value to the end user. Uh, a lot of the time CRM initiatives are built around uh, corporate goals, management understanding what their sales team's doing, uh, enforcing processes. Web Presented turns that paradigm completely 180 degrees. And our platform is number one tailored towards the end user, the salesperson out in the field. We believe if we can't provide value to the sales rep, they're not going to use a platform. So any initiative at the corporate level uh, will not succeed. Finally, uh, secondly, um, accessibility. The ability to connect to other systems within your environment. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then finally, usability. The system has to be fast, easy to use, and intuitive and hopefully as I guide you through the demonstration today you'll see just how easy to use web presented CRM is. Um, a quick note on how WP connects to the different platforms that you currently have. Well of course um, you're all running in for whether it be Cloud Suite or SXE um, and Web Presented has a very very in-depth two-way synchronization process with the info platform. In fact it's far more um, in-depth and far more integrated than, than any other CRM on the market. Uh, we also work with existing BI platforms, um, as well as Office 365 or Gmail for calendaring, um, e-commerce platforms, all the well-known um, e-commerce platforms, as well as the ones that integrate with Infor, uh, marketing automation tools, Google Maps for route planning, as well as a whole host of other uh, third-party connected platforms that WP CRM uh, connects to. What all this does is it makes Web Presented the, the hub, the center of all communications, all activity, so that your sales team only has to uh, visit one single place, and from there they can get eyes and visibility into all different other areas of the business and all of your customers' uh, body language. Now, how does artificial intelligence fit in here? Well, built inside Web Presented CRM's cloud is a very, very powerful AI engine that helps support salespeople's decision making. And if a salesperson uh, is, is guided through um, decision making process based on uh, data points and based on machine learning, then those decisions are going to be much more intelligent and much more informed. What I'm going to show you today is, is very much like what you're going to see in uh, very well-known applications. You're, you're, you're seeing Amazon here on the left, Netflix on the right, and, and effectively, these are two large platforms that use artificial intelligence. Well, Web Presented uses very similar technologies to what you're seeing in both Amazon or Netflix or any modern large platform to help understand customer buying behavior. And once we get a grasp on that buying behavior, with the input from, from your business to understand what are the key drivers of the business, what are the key drivers coming in, whether it be seasonality, regionality, um, strategic initiatives in terms of promotions and then what the expectation is that you want to get out of the system how what behaviors are you looking to drive within your sales organization then that's where the artificial intelligence is most truly powerful so what i'm going to do next is just take you through a simple day in the life of a sales rep how would a salesperson use artificial intelligence built into wpcrm to help make them uh, close deals faster hold on to customers 
for longer, be more efficient and more effective with the limited number of hours in their day, and stay organized and on top of any incoming um, threats or activities or opportunities. So as I jump over to my demonstration system, what you're seeing here is a simple dashboard. Now, intentionally, I'm going to show you the system uh, through the eyes of a sales rep, an outside sales rep. And in this particular case, our outside sales rep's name is Vic Aldrich. Now, Vic is responsible for a book of business. Maybe he's got a couple hundred customers that he's responsible for growing those business, that business within the customers. His customer base is, is a combination of some very influential, critical, large key accounts, as well as some smaller business that he's trying to grow. Vic's also responsible for doing prospecting, so growing, getting new leads, new new prospects into the funnel, and 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 nurturing those through to become eventually customers and repeat buyers and key accounts themselves. Uh, when Vic logs in or opens up his iPhone any given morning, like all good salespeople, Vic wants to know how he's performing. But not only does he want to know that, that how he's performed up until now, that what we call that rear view mirror analytics, he wants to know what does he have to do in order to achieve and exceed his goals for the remainder of the month and for the remainder of the year. And that point is where, where presented artificial intelligence comes in handy. So, so let's walk through this in a, in a simple step-by-step um, -step process. So Vic logs in, and in this particular case, Vic has two different sets of targets or goals. These targets were agreed upon by Vic and his, his manager at the outset of the year or at the outset of the fiscal period. And, and those um, targets are based on multiple factors, not only historically how his customers, how his book of businesses perform, but where do we want to take them to? What areas of the business are we looking to grow? And how are we going to maintain a healthy, a well-balanced set of sales dollars coming in for the foreseeable future. And, and to such an extent, we've done this down for demonstration purposes, but Vic has boiled down his, his goals into two different targets. He's got to meet two targets each month, one on the consum consumables business, one on the equipment business. Now, why is he broken down into two targets? Well, obviously it's a business decision. I won't go too much into, into the, the business tactical aspects other than to say typically targets like this nourish one another. If he's selling a lot of equipment, typically those customers are gonna need consumables. Where are they gonna get those consumables from? Well, preferably us. But at the same time, if you've got customers who are buying consumables, maybe they, next time their, their equipment um, dies and they need to, to buy new equipment, who are they gonna to come to? The trusted supplier who's selling them consumables. So, so the two work in a virtuous cycle, and that's why in this scenario, Vic's goals are, are broken down into two different groups. And simply by looking at this today, I can see here that um, Vic is actually uh, behind target on the consumable side, but he's ahead of target on the equipment side. In fact, the, the red indicator here tells us that, okay, for the remainder of this month, he's actually got to up his daily sales, his average daily sales, in order to meet that goal or that budget for the end of the period. On the equipment side, he's actually doing great. He's ahead of he's ahead of the game. Uh, he just needs to maintain the current run rate, and then he's going to accomplish that target. So, so given this small amount of information, what does our artificial intelligence engine now do? Well, what the engine does is it looks at Vic's current state of affairs of how he's performing, and it's going to gear its recommended activities heavily towards growing the areas of the business that we've predefined need attention. This artificial intelligence is all about steering your salespeople in the direction that are going to most, most benefit them and most benefit the business. In this particular case, we're going to try and steer Vic to increasing his consumable sales for this month. So he meets his goal, he gets his commission check, the customer is in a healthy and successful position. So how does the AI go about doing this? Well, what we do at WebPresenter, we analyze the sales history and various other factors for every single one of Vic's customers. And by analyzing data, what we mean is we find trends and patterns in not only single customers, but across multiple what we call lookalike customers. And if, for example, we find opportunities, what we call white space, 
cross-selling or upselling opportunities within existing customers, or if we find trends, what we call red flag events, for example, a customer has suddenly stopped buying um, uh, products, or a multitude of other factors. For example, if your customers have been still looking at your website, and remember, we're connected to these different systems so we can understand um, what, uh, you know, what are the uh, repeating events and, and what trigger events might cause an event within the CRM. If your customer's looking at your website and suddenly they stop buying, but they're still looking at your website, that's gonna be a trigger event that might generate an opportunity or an alert for Vic to help him understand uh, where he should be focusing his time. And to make it even easier, we simply stack rank or order VIX customers based on what our artificial intelligence algorithm tells us are the customers requiring most attention. Now, of course, we're going to weight certain customers differently. So, for example, if a customer is a very key and important uh, customer and suddenly they stop buying, that's a huge threat, that's a huge risk. That customer is going to be given a very high ranking or a high weight when it comes to um, directing VIX activities. If a customer is a smaller customer and there's just a few cross-sell or upsell opportunities, sure, we're gonna capture those, but we're not gonna put them at the top of VIX to-do list. So in other words, when VIX looks at his customer scorecard over to the right, this is a list of customers that the artificial intelligence has determined are most in need of his attention. So the customer at the very top of the list Transcend technology. This is the customer that our AI algorithms have determined needs most attention. Now, where does the AI come from? Well, not only does it look at, for example, existing opportunities in VIX pipeline, maybe that have stagnated or that, that require um, some sort of intervention. We also might want to look at uh, quotes that are expiring. So if we're sending out quotes, but they're, they're not being converted to orders, that's a key factor in elevating the priority of any given customer. Maybe we look at our, of course we're integrated with Office or Outlook, uh, Office 365 or Outlook, so we know exactly when the last time we had communication with every single one of our customers was. And if there's a customer that hasn't had a meeting or hasn't had a phone call or even a, an email correspondence within a certain amount of time, then those customers are also gonna be elevated onto the scorecard to help us know where we should be drawing VIX attention to. So let's go ahead and, and follow this through the, through the process. VIX is going to go ahead and click on Transcend Technology. This is number one customer that requires attention. And of course, I can see here immediately this customer is in pretty poor health. It's glad, I'm, VIX is very glad that the system has brought this to his attention. Because not only, if I look at some, some key metrics here, not only is the customer down 12% to, to where it was, 12 months prior in terms of sales, but it's also trailing off in a pretty significant um, uh, decline in terms of rate of change. So the velocity is, is slowing down quicker when it comes to 30 days, 90 days, 180 days. All of these data points have been distilled to help Vic understand uh, what are the key factors that go into determining what this customer might look like in the future and how is the longevity and the security of his repeat business for this customer. Now, most alarmingly, and obviously, uh, excuse the, the dates, the slightly old data, um, um, but most alarmingly, this customer has not ordered um, based on its typical cyclical ordering pattern. That's what we call the frequency score. So for example, this customer typically orders every two days, but we can see here if two, three weeks go by and this customer has not placed an order or the average order size is in rapid decline, then that's gonna be a red flag that's gonna put this customer squarely on VIX dashboard. So he's using this business intelligence, his artificial intelligence to help him understand where he should be focusing his time. Now, of course, not only can VIX look at other reports, what we call rear view mirror reports, understand the product categories that this customer's purchasing, understand the different groups and the composition of this customer's purchases. But importantly, the artificial intelligence goes way above and beyond typical historical reports. What the artificial intelligence does is finds connections. It finds similar what we call lookalike customers. And if there's other similar customers based on the industry, 
based on the size of business, based on SIC code, based on regionality, based on other factors that help us group um, customers together, as well as the purchase history that you already own based on your um, history inside of the ERP platform, that's when the AI can start making very, very well-educated recommendations on what we should be selling to this customer that we're currently not selling. It's simply a recommendation engine. Just like if you go on Amazon.com and it says, customers who purchased this item typically also purchased other items. This is what we can do with your Infor ERP data. We can analyze every single customer's history. We can find the commonality or similarities between customers. And we can understand where are the upsell or cross-sell opportunities within any given customer. So of course here, Vic's looking now at, at Transcend technology. And he can see, for example, that they've bought a lot of these aluminum panels from us in the last 12 months. That's fantastic, that's great. We're doing great business with them in aluminum panels. However, there's some items here, and I'm, I'm looking here, this is some, some paint that's used to paint the panels. Well, this customer's purchased none of the paint that goes along with the panels that they're typically buying. So we mentioned at the beginning that Vic's looking to grow his consumable sales. What better way to grow his consumable sales than get these insights into paint, which is clearly a consumable product, that this customer is probably buying, but probably buying elsewhere. So the beauty of having this information directly inside a CRM platform is not only can Vic get this information and, and make his own decisions, but he can now take action within the CRM. Maybe he wants to create a follow-up task where he's gonna uh, notify this particular customer, uh, put it on his calendar to call this customer, maybe like a to-do list uh, for the coming week to follow up with this particular customer and find out where they're getting their, their paint from. And of course, here he can assign this either to himself or he can assign this to a member on, on his team. Alternatively, he might want to schedule a meeting or generate an opportunity or even create a quote. And this will now generate a quote within the CRM that's tied to your Infor ERP platform, getting real-time pricing and availability information for these items specifically for this customer. This connects to your Infor ERP platform in real time and now generates a quote for this customer using customer's pricing for these items. Now, of course, we can send this quote to the customer. We can immediately get a, you know, a, a, a notification from customer if we want to convert this to an order and simply place the order into the Info ERP directly from the CRM platform. Extremely smart, extremely well educated decisions we're making here. And of course, we've just taken a couple minutes out of Vic's day to start driving revenue opportunities to make his time extremely uh, efficient and to now reach out with targeted, educated um, suggestions for our customers. So now let's talk a little bit more about this quoting and order entry process. So not only have we uh, started building a quote, I'm gonna add a few more items to the quote just to, to show you how the platform works. So I'm gonna start, for example, typing a, a part number and I'm gonna go ahead and add this item to the quote. Now you'll see here that of course, um, not only do we populate the description, the manufacturer, the, the, um, the quantity available from this customer's warehouse, all of those things that you would normally see in order entry, all built into the CRM platform and the quoting tool as well. But you'll also notice that we have the price that's generated, um, they're all showing up in green. What that means is that the not only do we pull in price from your Infor ERP platform, which is great. Obviously, there's some thought gone into customer-specific pricing. But using what presented to artificial intelligence, we can now do some further analytics on coming up with accurate pricing. So not only are we just taking the price coming out of the ERP platform, but we're also looking at what factors go into this particular price for this customer. And you'll notice here that we make this very, very easy for a customer. So using uh, some advanced statistical techniques as well as artificial intelligence based on historical purchases, based on lookalike customers, based on uh, price elasticity, um, 
from historical one or lost business, we can now start making recommendations of what price we should be selling this product for. And we dumb it down for the salesperson. So not now they're not looking at uh, budging margin numbers. We're simply coming up with recommended pricing tip. You can see here our target price for this customer is $10. We're also offering a second price, a yellow, and a red price, which we really don't want the customer to. This is basically the floor price. This is the absolute, absolute minimum that we want to sell this item for. So again, we're making the process easy. We're using smart, informed data to drive salespeople's decisions. And obviously, salespeople within distribution, a large part of their, their activity is working with customers on pricing. We're doing a, taking a lot of the guesswork out of it for this particular customer, for this particular sales rep as well. So as we're adding items to our quote, let's talk about another way that we can use integrated artificial intelligence. Now, of course, you, your salespeople probably would either typically give this order information to your inside sales team and they might be keying in orders in, into the Infor ERP, or perhaps uh, the salesperson themselves would log into Infor and start adding an order. But what they're missing in that situation is, again, artificial intelligence. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I've added three items to my order or my quote here. Let's go ahead and look over here to the right, where there's a light bulb icon that says show suggestions. If I open that particular link, what we're seeing now is based on the current basket, based on what products are in this basket, we're getting a list of other recommended products that typically accompany that basket. So again, using historical data, analyzing it with artificial intelligence, understanding what items are typically purchased together, we're now generating upsell opportunities at the time of data entry within the CRM, which is mobile, which is accessible, which the salesperson is going to be inside of anyway. It's a single platform. It's connected to your ERP system. And now we're taking a, a $192 order of three items. And suddenly, while I'm on the phone with my customer, well, I noticed you, you bought the adhesive and the paint. Well, what about this Texout remover? It's great. It works well with the, with the paint. It works on the adhesive as well. What do, you, do you want to go ahead and add that to the quote? And of course, by adding that item to the quote, we're now generating new revenue. I've suddenly added another $50 to the quote. We're, we're getting upsell opportunities, but they're not just shots in the dark. They're, they're highly focused, targeted, intelligent recommendations based on customers' behavioral preferences. And that's really the key of where um, WP CRM's data analytics come in. So what I'm going to do now, I've, I've given you a quick snapshot of the artificial intelligence um, built into WP CRM that uh, we currently use. And just to recap, I've gone over, um, for example, I've gone over how we make recommendations. I've gone over, for example, what the uh, what the uh, suggested or, or the, the scorecard might look like. And I've also talked about pricing. Um, support using artificial intelligence and i've talked about um, the ability to upsell or cross sell within an order entry what i'm going to do now is pivot over and talk to you a little bit about the future and and this is where web presented is is working very hard uh, we've got a, a project in place and incidentally i know several of our customers are actually on the call as well and then we have multiple uh, web presented customers that are also um, nsa clients and, and incidentally we a uh, great relationship with NSA, and thank you very much. And and uh, we find it's extremely powerful partnership. Um, and what we're looking for actually is beta users for our new what we call our Playmaker application. And I'm going to give you a sneak preview now. It's currently in development. It's not due out until probably end of the second quarter um, of this year. So we're probably about two or three months away from from going live. Uh, but we're currently uh, requesting. Uh, folks to be beta users will we'll, uh, basically give the platform away uh, for free uh, to a select handful of customers that are willing to work with us on, on providing feedback on how the system works. So this is a, a unique opportunity if you're um, deciding to, that artificial intelligence might be a 
part of your strategic uh, roadmap for the future, or if you are very interested in perhaps sort of dipping your toes in a, in a risk-free uh, manner and working with web presenting. So what I'm going to show you now is our new concept, and it's called Playmaking. And let me go ahead and just show you, I'm just going to show you a slideshow of how this particular app works. And this is all based on a, a mobile app. It works both on, on Android and iOS. It's a, it's a native mobile app. And it's um, intentionally called Playmaker with an AI. Um, and what it does is it, it prescribes opportunities and activities, just like I've shown you on the dashboards, but in a much more simplistic and gamified manner that's designed to be used on a phone. So let me give you a, a scenario of how this works. So, so Vic, the sales rep, wakes up in the morning, or maybe he's in the middle of his day and he's, he's visited a customer, he's got a couple of hours to kill, or maybe it's a, a start of the week and he wants to decide what's he gonna do today. So he'll open up his Playmaker app from Web Presenting. And the first thing he'll do is click on the link that says it's time to play. And as he clicks on that link, a highly tailored, highly customized, what we call a play or a, uh, a, an opportunity is going to show up for Vic. In this particular case, it's, it's brought in a customer logo here. And this, uh, the type of play is called an order stoppage. And what he's seeing here is this customer typically buys once every 3.5 days with an 87% order regularity. In other words, it's a very frequent order. And what we're seeing here is 18 days have gone by since this customer last ordered. So just like the example I showed you, but it's very much uh, a simple example here. And not only does, does our system present this information to Vic, but it also gives him a suggested recommended course of action. How do we address this particular situation? In this case, or well, maybe it's a phone call to the primary contact, who of course we know who they are because they're in the CRM platform, um, as well as you know, maybe we're gonna go schedule an on-site visit. And at this point, Vic, who you know, like, like most of us these days, has a limited attention span and simply wants to swipe through his, his phone, he has a decision to make. Does he, does he accept this play or does he reject it? Well, what he's going to do here is swipe left. He's going to swipe this play left. You'll see the green check mark shows up. And it's now added to his queue. It's added this particular course of action to his daily list. And, and actually, based on the historical um, length of time it takes to perform those activities, it knows how many hours are currently in his queue of activities or items to do. He can, of course, refine that that list of to-do items. But now, once refined, suddenly he gets his next play. And he can simply flick through these plays and start filling up his calendar, or filling up his to-do list based on very, very targeted artificial intelligent insights. The next one here is a, a growth potential by product category. So this particular customer, it's a great customer. Uh, however, based on product categories, the product categories that this customer is purchasing don't quite fall in line what we would expect from this customer's lookalikes. Or in, in other words, this customer's in the industrial segment. And typically, um, this uh, in, in industrial customers, they would typically spend 20% of their, their sales dollars on machine parts. Well, this particular customer is only spending 8% of their sales dollars on machine parts. So there's an opportunity for growth within an existing count, but growing a particular product category, a particular group here. So then the, the play might be created, quote. Now, there's a little bit of human intervention here. Maybe this isn't a good play. Maybe there's a reason why. So what Vic might do here is swipe this over to the left, okay? We're rejecting this play. Of course, as all good systems do, uh, if something doesn't go to plan, we're gonna ask Vic to just provide a little bit of information to say why he's deleting this. Why are we doing this? Or remember, artificial intelligence is all about machine learning. We're learning from things that haven't worked well in the past. So, for example, if there's a pricing issue on this or a customer um, is not interested, the system's going to learn from this. And now maybe it's going to um, modify the algorithm that's maybe not going to present this type of opportunity for Vic in the future. Here's the next one that comes up. This is for a vendor rebate. There's a customer here. Um, that has uh, that buys a lot from a specific vendor, but doesn't have any kind of 
vendor rebates in place. This is a great potential for growing some margins, helping the customer, um, maintaining a better relationship with the vendor, win-win-win across the board. And there's no contract or rebate contract in place here. So again, we can take these um, plays from any different system, from any different type of metric, and now Vic can now see, here's some suggestions, here's some anomalities outside of the usual that Vic might want to pursue. In this particular case, he's gonna swipe up. What that means is he's gonna execute this play immediately. It's not gonna add it to his queue, but he's actually gonna complete this up. So it's gonna present him with a task window, an opportunity, and generate those things right away. And that's where Vic's gonna be focused on his day. So again, Please feel free to reach out to, uh, to Brian or myself if this is uh, of interest to you, if you're interested in becoming a beta customer uh, for WebPresenters Playmaker. Like I said, we're in development right now. Uh, we're leveraging the artificial intelligence that we already have inside of WebPresenters CRM. And we believe that this is the future for salespeople uh, where, where there's so much opportunity for usage. It's easy and simple to use. There's no training involved and it keeps salespeople engaged. All right, well, what I'll do is I'll wrap up by just simply saying thank you very much. Um, Brian, I believe you may or may not have some questions. Um, I'm not sure if there were uh, any questions coming in from, from the audience. Uh, but uh, if not, I'll just say thank you. But Brian, over to you if there's any questions that came in. Yeah, so thank you, James. And um, yeah, one question that I have is um, seeing that the AI is able to play in suggesting, you know, complementary products and offerings and so forth. Um, what are you seeing with customers that are making use of that at this point in time in terms of maybe the bump in sales, just kind of a maybe an average or, or possibly a range as to what that might look like? That's a great question. What? So we have done a few analyses. Um, there's obviously, uh, quite frankly, the last the, most of our AI has been developed within the last. Uh, year or so, um, and and we've got two different sources of feedback on on the benefits here. Number one is that the kind of the qualitative feedback we're getting is massive thumbs up. Uh, salespeople are reporting to their managers, this is fantastic. Um, the adoption of the CRM is just huge. The number of tasks and opportunities is going up um, because that's obviously measurable from the CRM as well. So embedding AI helps with CRM adoption. That is absolutely 